So this is my part two video on equilibrium potentials. But we know normally we have a high concentration of sodium outside of the cell, and normally we have a low concentration of sodium inside of the cell. So these are the normal conditions of most cells. And again, we know we usually have a negative voltage inside of the cell, a resting membrane potential of around negative 70 millivolts inside of the cell. So now that we have these conditions, what would happen if we opened a channel allowing these sodium ions to flow in and out of the cell? What would happen? Well, we know due to this concentration gradient, sodium would want to flow inside of the cell. And also we know due to this voltage, these positive sodium ions would also want to enter inside of this negative voltage cell. So we have a strong driving force for sodium to enter inside of the cell. However, once we open these channels, we know these sodium ions will enter inside of the cell. However, as those positively charged sodium ions enter inside of the cell, the cell will become more positively charged. If originally we had a resting membrane potential of negative 70 millivolts, as positive sodium ions enter inside of the cell, the voltage would get more positive. And then as more positive sodium ions enter, the voltage will get even more positive. And now so many positive sodium ions have entered, it's become so positive inside of the cell. As more positive sodium ions enter inside of the cell, the cell will become more positive. And eventually the cell will become so positive. And the magic number for sodium is once it becomes around positive 55 millivolts, it's become so positive inside of the cell that this positive voltage will start repelling those positive charged sodium ions. And eventually those positive charged sodium ions will start being pushed out. So originally, in the original conditions, we had a very negative voltage, so therefore those positive sodium ions would strongly want to enter inside of the cell. However, as more positive sodium ions entered into the cell, the voltage would get really positive, and eventually it would be so positive that it would start driving the sodium ions outside of the cell. And then eventually we would reach an equilibrium, where again that initial driving force entering is now equal to that driving force leaving. Due, the driving force due to the gradient, the concentration gradient, now equals the driving force due to the voltage. So now we've reached an equilibrium. And that voltage, once we've reached this equilibrium, is positive 55 millivolts. And this positive 55 millivolts is sodium's equilibrium potential. That's what an equilibrium potential, that's what, so, that's what an ion's equilibrium potential is. So sodium's equilibrium potential is positive 55 millivolts. And essentially what it is, is it's the voltage once we've reached equilibrium. For example, we had this initial condition that now we opened the channels, now the sodium ions were free to flow, and eventually, as they were free to flow, we would eventually reach an equilibrium. And once we've reached that equilibrium, the voltage was positive 55 millivolts. So that's sodium's equilibrium potential. It's the potential, it's the voltage once we've reached equilibrium. So now let's do a different example. Let's say we have potassium. So normally inside of a cell, we normally have a high concentration of potassium inside of the cell and a low concentration of potassium outside of the cell. So under these conditions, if we, if we open a potassium channel, these, these, sodium, uh, these potassium ions would actually start flowing out due to the concentration gradient. And yeah, it's a negative voltage, so that will draw on the potassium a little bit, but this concentration gradient is so dramatic that originally the potassium ions would start flowing out. However, as the po positive potassium ions start flowing out, it would get more negative inside of the cell. If positive potassium ions flow out, it would get more negative inside of the cell. And then more positively charged potassium ions leave and it would get even more negative. And eventually it gets so negative, it gets so negative inside because so much potassium has left, it gets so negative that it would start to draw those positively charged potassium ions in. It gets so negative that then it starts to draw those potassium ions in. So now that original driving force of potassium leaving due to the concentration gradient now equals that driving force of potassium entering due to this voltage. So we've reached an equilibrium. So now we're at an equilibrium and the potential, that voltage, once we've reached equilibrium, is negative 85 millivolts. So now we know the equilibrium potential of potassium is negative 85 millivolts. And again, it's the voltage at equilibrium. It's the potential inside of the cell once we reached equilibrium. So again, the point is we had these initial conditions. Now we open these potassium ions. So now potassium ions were free to flow out. Eventually, as they are free to flow in and out, we've reached an equilibrium. And, and that voltage, once we've reached equilibrium, is potassium's equilibrium potential.
And again, in the previous video, we learned about the, the energetics and the thermodynamics of, of ion transport and what's going on. And we know, for example, let's say we have a high concentration of, potassium, of sodium outside and a low concentration of sodium inside. We know due to these concentration gradients, sodium will spontaneously enter. And we can determine that spontaneity using this equation. But again, we know due to these voltages, that will also drive sodium inside. And we can find the spontaneity due to these voltages using this equation. We talked about this in the previous video. So therefore, we can find the overall spontaneity of sodium entering by looking at the spontaneity due to the concentration gradient and looking at the spontaneity due to the voltages. Now we can find the overall spontaneity of sodium entering, and we can determine that using this equation. But we know once these sodium ions start entering, we would eventually reach an equilibrium. We would eventually reach an equilibrium. And again, we talked about, and then we would be at sodium's equilibrium potential, but we would eventually reach an equilibrium and we said that equilibrium was around positive 55 millivolts, where that driving force entering equals the driving force leaving. So therefore, we're at equilibrium, so therefore this delta G is zero. We're at equilibrium, the sodium entering equals the sodium leaving. The driving force due to the concentration gradient entering equals the driving force due to the voltage leaving. So we're at equilibrium, so the delta G is zero. So this delta G is zero, we know we're at equilibrium, so the delta G is zero. So when the delta G is zero, we could find what the voltage was. We could just rearrange and find what the voltage was when the delta G was zero. And if we found that voltage, again, that would be sodium's equilibrium potential. We would get an equilibrium potential of positive 55 millivolts. And again, it's just the voltage once we're at equilibrium. It's, it's once we open this channel, sodium ions start flowing in and out, we would reach an equilibrium. And that voltage, once we've reached equilibrium, is sodium's equilibrium potential. And we can determine that by knowing this equation, by knowing when we're at equilibrium, the delta G is zero. So finding that voltage once we're at equilibrium. And that's what the equilibrium potential is.